All right guys, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve 17 and I kind of want to give you a bit of an effects walkthrough with DaVinci Resolve 17. So all these new effects that they have introduced. Now we will just be going through the fusion effects, not the open effects, because I know that some, if not all of these may be limited to the studio version. So let's just go through the standard effects and kind of play around with them so you understand exactly how they work, what you could use them for. Now, I will start with a bit of a disclaimer. Do not download the public beta if you are using this or will be using it for professional work. It is very buggy, even just testing these, like I've had it fully crash, I've had to do full reset. It's a beta, that's what happens. So anyway, let's start off with this binoculars one. Luckily, these are nice and sort of really easy to understand based on their titles, but they're also really useful. So let's have a look. So we're gonna drag that effect down onto our first clip here. And over in the inspector, we have our new effects tab here, which will give us access to all the parameters that we can control. So as you can see, we're getting this cool binoculars like vignette with a little bit of chromatic aberration going on the sides and a little bit of a blur, giving us this cool binoculars effect. Now I'm gonna to have to, for this sake of this video, change the proxy probably to quarter. So I apologize for that, just because these effects can be pretty taxing. So we have this binocular effect and we can control the blur strength. So we can have it super, super blurry, whereas it's not too blurry. We've got the aberration distance. So the aberration distance refers to this RGB separation here. So the chromatic aberration by turning it up, you get this really crazy effect there. And then the strength is similar, right? It's going to be increasing how much of that color separation we're actually getting. The vignette size is pretty self-explanatory. It's gonna be dealing with the outer vignette, not necessarily this inner vignette. And that's what the sharpness refers to as well. So we can sharpen that right up, turn that right on. It's just a normal vignette. So let's reset that. The edge blur refers to this blurriness just around here. So if we turn that off, you can see it gets quite sharp around the edges there and you can turn it all the way up and increase that blurriness there. And then the mask blur refers to just this sort, I guess the black outline, right? So if we have that off, it's gonna be super sharp, which kind of looks weird with the aberration. And then you can increase how soft you want it. And then you have your eye position. What I found really cool about this is you can have this as binoculars effect, sure, but we can also use it as like an a eye opening effect. So we could separate these eyes out a little bit and we can make the width of the eye a little bit less so. So what we could do is we could animate the height. So set that there, go forward a little bit. And then what we end up having is this kind of eye opening effect, which is really, really cool. Cause before we'd have to go into fusion and deal with that. And so now at least we can do this and by, you know, we just increase the width and then we would have a full eye opening. So pretty cool effect that we can do that. See, that looks pretty cool already. So a lot of different effects just because it's binoculars doesn't mean you can't do an eye opening effect like this. See, even that looks pretty, pretty cool. So the next effect we have is the CCTV. So we get this kind of cool little overlay here with a few titles. Obviously all the titles are editable. So we can change it from record to recording. Or, you know, if we type properly recording, cam four to whatever we wanted to do it as. And then we can change this time code stamp and all the fonts and all that sort of stuff as would be expected. What's really nice is that little black box that the text is in actually dynamically scales with the size of the text. So pretty cool that it does that. And we also, if we close these down, we can also change some colors here, change it to red. You can affect the sort of lines so you can actually make it color behind the background. So if you wanna have a little bit more of a sort of modern CCTV, you can also increase the line sharpness depending on what you wanna do, frequency, all that kind of thing. It's all editable. You can bring down the noise, bring up the noise. So there is a little bit, but yeah, that is the CCTV one. Onto our third clip, that's called Kung Fu Master. We have colored border. I actually quite like this one because I tend to do a lot of photos in my editing. So we have this colored border here and you've got pretty much everything you would expect. You've got the border width, you've got the radius, so you could do like a little bubble, which is kind of cool. And you've got your soft edge as well, and then the colors. And that is pretty much it for this one. It's just a simple border, but pretty cool that you can just sort of do that 
and have maybe like an image pop up on screen. Pretty cool. We'll get rid of that. Go back to this one. Let's do digital glitch overlay. This one's really cool that they have inbuilt this one because before you'd have to go into Fusion, it was a little bit of a hassle. Now you have it built in. It also, this one really taxes it. You can see it's quite slow to play back. We're getting one frame a second. It is what it is. But you can obviously play around with the different glitch settings so we can increase it on the width, can increase it on the height, and you can also increase the uh, chromatic aberration. So this color split happening here, you can increase that there so you get some really funky sort of glitching. And all this is already animated for you. So you don't really have to do anything. If you want, you can reposition it, but I find that it, by default, it's pretty good. Next is a fun one, drone overlay. With FPV drones becoming a bit of a thing at the moment, like it's super cool that this is included and you've got all these cool little graphics here, nothing really animating, but it looks pretty cool. Obviously you can change the color if you want. So we can change the color of the sort of video footage. We can change it to green if we maybe wanted to do like night vision or something like that. We could also change like the color of the, I guess the HUD elements. So if we wanted to make the HUD blue and go okay, we can change it to blue. And another cool thing is you can actually control the target center. So you can have this connect to someone which is pretty cool. So you could always animate this. So let's set a keyframe, go forward a little bit, and then just sort of track, you have that track down. And then you have this little animation, if we can get to it, where it moves across the screen. It's glitching a bit too much. So let's not push the computer too hard. Cool. And then obviously you can change target size and all that sort of stuff, whatever you want to do. It isn't this blurry. Keep in mind that I have got the proxy on. You turn it off, you get a nice sharp vector image. And yeah, this one's gonna be really cool for you guys out there doing some FPV drone stuff, or even if you just wanted to do like an action film, kind of cool that they have it inbuilt there. And yeah, pretty much all the color, all the settings you would wanna change are there. Next one is another good one for myself, which is the DSLR overlay. Pretty cool, it's just uh, like a, as is a DSLR overlay with all the options here to change. Now, what is really cool is that this time code here is actually set at, to show the hours, seconds and minutes, but you don't have to. If you don't want to, you can show, choose what to show, what not to show. You can also change how many frames per second it should be showing. And you can also offset it so that it doesn't start at zero, which is pretty cool and have it go for 24 frames. You can change the, obviously the color of everything. So if you want it to be white, you can have it at white and it'll change everything to white. Pretty good. And yeah, I mean, it's gonna be really cool. I like doing photography videos. So this will be nice to be able to do, sort of do that flash and you can do the overlay color, which is also animatable, which is awesome. So you could literally have it, I guess, go from you know black, go forward a few frames have it go to bright green and then four to few frames and then have it go back to black again. So we drop all that way, that all that down to black. And then you end up getting this kind of flash-ish thing here where it will change colors. So kind of get like a little focusing action going on there. Pretty cool that you can animate that. And honestly, I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun using this one inbuilt because I do do a lot of videos. And what's cool is you have your battery health one there and you can actually increase that bar, which is kind of cool. Pretty cool that you can do that. Just those little attention to detail points. Next one, DVE. So a video sort of file here. I think this is gonna be really useful for YouTubers because what you can do is you, one, let's change the border a little bit. Let's bring it, make it a little bit smaller, like so. And then change the color of the border. Let's change it to red. Nice, and then we can move it down. So we just move it down. So this border is basically a window into the video. So if you don't like the framing on the video, just click the, go to the video settings in the tab and you can just move them independently depending on what you want to be in the frame. But you've got that there. You've also got like, you know, you've got your drop shadow, you're not gonna notice it because it's on the black background, 
But what we could do here is just grab a quick title, see what I mean, chuck a quick title over the top and like so, and you would literally do like, so you could have this running at the end of your videos for, I guess, your YouTube channel. So super cool that that is inbuilt. And honestly, I'll probably end up using this one just because that makes sense. It looks super easy to use. So delete that. And you got a few different options in the effects tab, but I'm probably, you got a cool rotating one. That's kind of cool. But I'm probably gonna be using it for the end screen in my YouTube channel. Different video. Oh, and let's just quickly reset this. Next one, night vision. I mean, pretty standard. Actually, let's go to this one for night vision. You're gonna drop it over. It's gonna give it this really cool green pixelated look. And you can control the pixelation and all that sort of stuff. So you can have it super pixelated. You can have it sort of animate in and out. Keep in mind, anything with a diamond can be animated. So you can have it sort of pixelate in and out. You can increase the brightness if you want to, however you want to. And you can also change the color if you want, although I'm pretty sure night vision is green, but you can have it pink if you want, kind of cool. So night vision, pretty standard. The next one's quite funny. I think it's like, um, especially for 2020, we've got a video call feature and it just puts this little frame around the, puts this little frame around the video and you get this little sort of like timer and all this sort of stuff. I think it's quite funny. And you can obviously change the call button if you want to, have it to green, that kind of thing. You can also change the sizing of it depending on how you want it. And again, just like the DVE one, you can always reframe the video after the fact. So if you wanna position the video a little bit better, you can. <laughs> I think this one's gonna be a lot of fun for people dealing with 2020. So yeah, pretty cool one there. Obviously you can change the sort of the shadow and the angle of the shadow, depending on how you want it to look. You can also increase the size of the shadow and all that lovely stuff as well. And last but not least is the video camera one, similar to the DSLR one, except more specific to video cameras. It's gonna have a lot of the same attributes and effects, obviously the standard stuff like color and all that sort of stuff. You can also adjust the time code just like before, change the frames per second to whatever you are shooting at, 25 frames a second, all that sort of stuff. And you do have your battery level indicator there. So very similar to the other ones. You also have your record light. You can have that on or off, but I think by default, it runs on that randomization pattern, just like the other ones. And if not, which it isn't, you can actually animate it by a little thing. We go equals. We're gonna do a little thing here. We're gonna go random. And we're gonna do numbers between zero and one. So it's gonna go either zero or one. And then when we play this back, we get this cool little flickering record light. So pretty cool and I guess useful for those content creators out there that do a lot of video work and sort of want to show that process in their videos. So there you go guys, that's all the new fusion effects added into Vinci Resolve 17. Actually really useful one, so I'm actually really stoked that they've included them in DaVinci Resolve 17. Like I said, there is a ton more included with open effects, but I am pretty sure the majority of them are for studio, if not all, so I didn't really want to cover them in this video. I will be doing a video on the titles because they have included a lot of different titles, a lot of good titles. So look forward for that video. If you wanna see that one, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. It will be coming next week. But until then, see ya.